friends during this semester we will be studying a course on power system dynamics this power system dynamics is also popularly known as power system stability the modern power systems are very widely interconnected while these interconnections result in operating economy and reliability through mutual assistance they also contribute to the stability problem what i am trying to emphasize here is that the power systems are widely interconnected and the stability problem has become a very important challenge to power system engineers because of this large scale inter interconnections the power for power system stability analysis the mathematical model of the system is required to be developed the mathematical model is a set of non linear differential equations and a set of algebraic equations for this non linear differential equations and set of algebraic equations there is no formal solution available these equations are to be solved using non linear using numerical techniques i'm sorry using numerical techniques and the numerical techniques take a lot of time to solve the equations over the years the power system stability has posed a problem to the power system engineers the problem is posed in two respects one is the modeling of the system to get the correct assessment of power system stability a detailed model of the power system need to be developed once the mathematical model is correctly developed one has to obtain the solution through numerical techniques because of the large size of the power system the number of differential equations are large in number and therefore solution through numerical techniques takes enormous time historically historically the stability problem has been attempted from 1920 onwards earlier we were not having digital computers and therefore computations were mainly done using hand calculations or in those days slide rules were available for calculation somewhere in 1950 or so the analog computers were developed and these were used for simulating the power system stability problem then in late 1950s digital computers came in and the first digital computer program for power system stability was developed in 1956 <coughs> at that time the program was mainly to analyze the tangent stability of the system over the years another development took place that is the implementation or application of high response excitation systems the high response excitation systems were capable of improving tangent stability of the system but the application of the high response excitation systems resulted into a problem of poor damping of the system oscillations this problem of poor damping of system oscillations has been overcome by implementing what is commonly known as the power system stabilizers during this semester we will try to understand the development of mathematical model of the power system the mathematical model includes the mathematical model for synchronous machine excitation systems voltage regulators governors and loads
for having the correct assessment of the stability, the models need to be accurately developed. Earlier, due to the computational difficulties, many assumptions were made and therefore, the, the assessment through computation and the actual ground reality, there used to be a lot of difference. Now, this course we will cover in about 40 hours. The text for textbook for this course is Power System Stability and Control by Prabha Kundur. This is a very nicely written book. Over the years, a number of books have been developed, uh, written, and a lot of research work or research papers are available. From time to time, I will refer to other books and research papers which are relevant to our study. The first lesson on power system dynamics is introduction to the power system stability problem. Today, we will address to these aspects the basic concepts and definitions classification of the power system stability, rotor dynamics and swing equation and swing curve. Now, let us first define what is power system stability. Power system stability may be broadly defined as that property of a power system that enables it to remain in a state of operating equilibrium under normal condition and to regain an acceptable state of equilibrium after being subjected to a disturbance. If you carefully look into this definition, you will find that one has to emphasize on ability to remain in operating equilibrium. And second point we have to emphasize is the equilibrium between opposing forces. A power system is subjected to a variety of disturbances. It is never in steady state condition. Small disturbances in the form of load changes continuously come, while large perturbations in the form of faults, tripping of lines, change in large load and dropping of generators do come in the system. A power system is designed and operated in such a fashion, so that it can withstand certain probable contingencies. For the purpose of understanding this problem, the power system stability problem is classified into two broad categories. One is called voltage stability and second is called, I am sorry, one is called angle stability and second is called voltage stability. Earlier years, the stability means angle stability. During the last one decade, the another type of stability that has come into picture is the voltage stability. The angle stability is further classified into small signal stability tangent stability, mid term stability and long term stability. We will uh, briefly define these different types of stability problems and try to understand what we mean by the different terminologies. 
voltage stability is also defined into two broad categories. One is called large disturbance voltage stability and second is small disturbance voltage stability. Now, let us define what is rotor angle stability. The rotor angle stability is the ability of the interconnected synchronous machines of a power system to remain in synchronism. Here, the emphasis on ability to maintain synchronism. This is the primary requirement for the operation of a power system, where, where all the machines of the system remain in synchronism. Now, for the system to remain in synchronism, we have to study the torque balance of synchronous machines. The synchronous machine is the primary component here, where we have to maintain equilibrium between the torque supplied by the prime mover and the electromagnetic torque developed by the synchronous generator. <coughs> to analyze this power system stability, we have to first understand the dynamics of the rotor and develop a mathematical equation to describe the dynamics of the rotor. For developing the basic equation, we make use of the principle of dynamics, elementary principle of dynamics. As per the rotational dynamics, we all know that the accelerating torque is the product of moment of inertia and angular acceleration. That is for any rotating body, the accelerating torque is equal to the moment of inertia multiplied by angular acceleration. And this is the fundamental law on which actually the swing equation is best. Now, as we know that synchronous machine may operate as a synchronous generator or a synchronous motor. When you look at the rotor of the synchronous generator, the two torques which act on the synchronous generator rotor are one is the mechanical torque which acts on the system and another is the electrical torque or we can call it electromagnetic torque which acts on the rotor. These two torques in operate or act on the rotor in opposite direction. The, the mechanical torque is provided by the prime mover and electrical torque is developed due to interaction of magnetic field and stator currents. The rotor rotates in the direction of mechanical torque that is if you can just look here if I show the direction of rotation it is in the same direction as the mechanical torque is applied to the system. Under steady operating condition these two torques are equal and the rotor of the synchronous machine rotates at synchronous speed. However, However, when disturbances occur, there exists a unequilibrium between the two torques, these two torques are not equal and this, this difference is called accelerating torque. When I look at the synchronous motor, the, the driving torque is developed by the flow of electric power from the supply and it meets the load torque. Therefore, load torque becomes the braking torque while the driving torque is the electrical torque and the rotor rotates in the direction of 
in which the electrical torque is developed. The swing equation or actually I will the swing equation is to be derived a differential equation can be written relating the accelerating torque moment of inertia and acceleration this can be written as j into d2 theta m by dt2 equal to ta where ta is difference of tm minus t tm is positive for generator operation and t is also positive for generator operation while for motor operation they take negative signs when we use mk's system of units j the total moment of inertia is expressed in kilogram meter square theta m the angular displacement of rotor with respect to the stationary axis in mechanical radians now i am here emphasizing that in this equation theta m is measured with respect to a stationary axis time is measured in seconds tm is the mechanical or sharp torque supplied by the prime mover less retarding torque due to rotational losses in newton meters that the unit for the torque is newton meters this tm is the torque supplied by the prime mover less rotational losses it means the torque which is available for rotating the rotor similarly the t is the net electrical torque or electromagnetic torque in newton meters ta is the net accelerating torque in newton meters now if you see this equation then this theta m increases continuously even under steady state conditions because theta m is measured with respect to stationary axis okay now in instead of measuring the angle with respect to stationary axis the angle can be measured with respect to a synchronously rotating axis therefore theta m can be defined as omega sm into t plus delta m where omega sm is the synchronous speed of the machine this is measured in radians per second delta m is the angular displacement of the rotor in mechanical radians from the synchronously rotating reference axis now this equation 2 when you, when you take the derivatives of this equation with respect to time the first derivative is written as d theta m by dt2 equal to omega sm plus d delta m by dt that is we can see the rotor speed is equal to synchronous speed plus this additional term when we take the second derivative d2 theta m divided by dt2 is equal to d2 delta m by dt2 okay omega sm being constant its derivative is zero now we substitute the value of rotor acceleration in the equation for we get expression as j times d2 delta m by dt2 equal to ta ta minus t now at this point i want to emphasize that all the terms in this equation are torque terms in newton meters in power system studies we are more comfortable with the 
terms in power power may be watts kilowatts megawatts and therefore what you do is we multiply this equation 5 by omega m that is d theta m by dt now when you multiply this by this term omega m our equation becomes j into omega m d2 delta m by dt2 equal to omega m tm minus omega m t now here this speed into torque this is the power speed is measured in radians per second power a uh, torque is measured in Newton meters this product is power in watts now we will represent this term omega m t m as p m omega m t as p e where p m is the soft power input to the machine less rotational losses we are emphasizing all the time the term rotational losses here the meaning here is that this is not the torque supplied by the prime mover but it is the prime mover torque minus rotational losses p is the electrical power crossing the air gap so also called air gap power now in this equation 7 we substitute uh, the expression for power and the equation becomes j into omega m d2 delta m by dt2 equal to p m minus p equal to p a. Now, this term j into omega m j is the moment of inertia in kilogram meter square omega m is speed in radians per second. Now, this product is called angular momentum. Now, in practical situations, the rotor speed omega m is very nearly equal to the synchronous speed. The difference is very small. The difference may become large only when machine loses synchronism. Right? And therefore, what we do is for the purpose of simplicity, if we represent omega m in this equation by this omega s m, then this product of omega s m and moment of inertia j, it will be denoted as the inertia constant m. And therefore, my equation take the shape m d2 delta m by dt2 equal to p m minus p, where m is known as inertia constant. Strictly speaking, this coefficient should be j into omega m. And since omega m is not constant, therefore this coefficient term strictly is not constant but by assuming by making this assumption omega m is equal to omega s m this coefficient becomes constant and it simplifies our analysis further the error in incurred by making this simplification is negligible okay therefore we are justified in assuming this coefficient of the acceleration term as constant and this is called initial constant m. Now, at this stage I would like to emphasize that this term m varies over a wide range depending upon size of the machine, type of machine because we have two main types of synchronous generators hydro 
machines, hydro generators and turbo generators. And these two machines have widely different value of inertia constant m. And this inertia constant m will be different depending upon the size of the machine. Now, to overcome this problem, we define another term or another inertia constant which is denoted by the symbol h. We have to be, we have to very clearly understand the definition of h. The inertia constant h or the constant h is defined as the stored kinetic energy in mega joules at synchronous speed divided by machine rating in mv. For any synchronous machine, when, is ro when the rotor is rotating at synchronous speed, we can find out what is the kinetic energy stored in the rotor and we divide this kinetic energy stored in the rotor by machine rating. If we denote the kinetic energy stored in mega joules and machine rating in MVA, then the unit of this term becomes mega joules per MV. We can also represent in kilojoules per kilowatt, per kVA, not kilowatt, per kVA. But since the machine ratings are normally in MVA, we prefer to use the rating in MVA and energy stored in megajoules. Okay? Therefore, this can be written as 1 by 2 j omega s m square upon the machine rating in MVA as mech. Now, we will develop a relationship between the inertia constant m and constant h. So, that the m which is there in our differential equation will be replaced by constant h. From this equation 10, we can write the inertia constant m as 2 h upon omega s m into the machine rating s mech. Now, we substitute for inertia constant m in our equation. We find here that this becomes 2 times h omega s m d 2 delta m upon d t 2 equal to p m minus p upon s mech. Now, if we assume m v a base for the system as the machine rating in m v a, then p m upon s mech becomes the per unit mechanical power. Similarly, p divided by s mech becomes the per unit electrical power. Okay. Therefore, this equation can now be written in terms of power expressed in per unit. Further, as you all know that in power systems, the per unit system of calculations are very convenient and therefore, the equation is manipulated and written in terms of per unit power. Therefore, the equation 13 here is written as 2 h upon omega s m d 2 delta m d t 2 equal to p m in per unit minus p e in per unit. Now, every time writing per unit is not very convenient. Therefore, what we do is that we drop this nomenclature here, but we keep in mind that power is expressed in per unit. Therefore, with this we can write down the equation describing the rotor dynamics of the synchronous machine as 2 h upon omega s m d 2 delta m by d t 2 equal to p m minus p. 
at this stage we have to be very careful and understand very clearly that this pm and pe are expressed in per unit while expressing pm and pe in per unit the mva base is the machine rating in mva for any machine which i am writing this differential equation if we assume the mva base okay then mva base is the machine rating in mv and therefore pm and pe are expressed in per unit in terms of mva base of the machine now here this delta m is expressed in radians per second i'm sure radians not radians per second is a correction omega sm is expressed in radians per the units of these two terms should be consistent we know a term known as angle in electrical radians speed in electrical radi radians per second therefore if we use instead of the angle in mechanical radians and speed in mechanical radians per second we can use delta in electrical radians and omega sm in electrical radians per second and therefore what we do is that keeping in mind that these two terms should have the consistent units we drop the subscript m and we write the equation in the form 2 times h upon omega s equal to d2 delta by dt2 equal to p m minus p in this is this equation is known as the swing equation of the synchronous machine this is applicable to generator as well as to motor only difference is when we write this equation for motor pm becomes negative and p also become negative so that this term becomes p e minus p now here we can express delta in radians omega as it radians per second if we do in this manner we can write the equation in the form h upon 2 h upon pi f that is omega as can be replaced by 2 pi f and you will have the equation in the form h upon pi f d2 delta by dt2 equal to p a minus p okay many times we express delta in electrical degrees and omega in electrical degrees per second in that case omega s will be replaced by 360 into f so that the resulting equation will be in the form h upon 180 f d2 delta by dt2 equal to pm minus p we do use swing equation either in this form or in the previous form but while using this equation we have to be very careful in expressing the delta in proper units again in this case delta is in electrical degrees while in the equation 16 coefficient is h upon pi f delta is in electrical radians as we will see here actually that this is the <coughs> basic swing equation on which or around which the stability analysis of a power system depends now we have two terms here pm minus pe this pe this is the electrical power output of the machine is 
is non linearly related to or is a non linear function of delta and therefore this differential equation becomes a non linear differential equation or we can say that the swing equation is a second order non linear differential equation suppose you have any system a number of machines number of synchronous machines then we have to write down swing equation of each machine while in this we have to write down the correct expression for electrical power output now when this swing equation is solved the solution of this swing equation is known as swing curve that is what we'll get actually when you solve this equation if you solve this equation you will get the delta as a function of time delta as function of time and therefore we can define this swing curve when the swing equation is solved we obtain the expression for delta as a function of time a graph of the solution is called swing curve of the machine and inspection of the swing curves of all the machines of the system will show whether whether the machines this is wrong mistake whether the machines remain in synchronism after a disturbance i am writing here whether the machines remain in synchronism after a disturbance again this is a mistake here after a disturbance for the purpose of solving the second order differential equation using numerical techniques or standard practice is to represent the second order differential equation in terms of two first order differential equations because when we apply the numerical techniques for solving the differential equations using digital computers it handles first order differential equations we can write down the second order differential equation as two first order differential equations by defining by defining a term omega but the omega is the actual speed of the machine and therefore we can define these two differential equations in the form 2h upon omega as d omega by dt that is we are having the d2 delta by dt2 therefore omega is defined as d delta by dt okay so that now here we have one variable omega then the second equation becomes d delta by dt whose expression comes out to be omega minus omega s okay now suppose you have a practical system where you have more than one machine that is called a multi machine system in a multi machine system the output and hence the accelerating power of each machine depend upon the angular position 
and to the more rigorous also upon the angular speeds of all the machines of the system. Thus, for a three phase system, oh, this is a little small mistake here again. Thus, for a three machine system, for a three machine system, there are three simultaneous differential equations. The equations will look like this m1 d2 delta 1 by dt2 equal to pm1 minus pe1 which is function of delta 1 delta 2 delta 3 and it is also function of d delta 1 by dt d delta 2 by dt d delta 3 by dt. I will tell actually why this p1 is function of this derivative terms also. The for the second machine, we have to substitute initial constant of that machine, and the electrical output of this machine is function of all these angles and these derivatives. Similarly, for the third machine, we have p3 function of all these derivatives. Now, since the system we are considering here is in dynamic condition, okay. when system rotor is in dynamic condition, it develops some damping torque and this damping torque is proportional to the speed division. Then let us correct it, it is proportional to the speed or speed division with respect to the sequence speed. Now, this d delta 1 by dt, d delta 2 by dt, d delta 3 by dt, these are the rotor speeds with respect to the synchronously rotating reference frame. Now, to simplify our stability analysis, we ignore these damping terms. Once we ignore these damping terms, the electrical output will exclusively be function of these angles only. Okay. Now, I would like to <coughs> tell something more about the electrical power. The important characteristic that has a strong bearing on power system stability is the relationship between interchange power and the position of rotors of the synchronous machines. This relationship is highly nonlinear. I told you here the electrical power P E right, is function of rotor angles and it is nonlinear. Now, if I take a simple example to illustrate this. Let us consider this case, we have two machines connected by a transmission line. We can represent this machine 1 by a voltage source in series with a reactance. Similarly, the machine 2 can be represented by a voltage source in series with the reactance. The machine 1 is supplying power to machine 2. This can be understood as gen machine 1 is a synchronous generator, machine 2 is a synchronous motor. For this simple system, if we develop an expression for electrical power output from machine 1, then this can be derived by writing or by first drawing a phase diagram. The phase diagram can be simply drawn in this fashion. We can start with the terminal voltage of the machine synchronous machine 2 that I is the current 
the internal voltage of the synchronous motor is represented by this phasor E m. To this E m we add this voltage drops, we add the voltage drops which take place in the internal reactance of the motor line reactance and generator reactance to get the internal voltage. The, but this phasogram diagram shows that E m to this E m if we add this voltage drop I into X m we get the voltage E T 2 to this we add the voltage drop I into X L we get the voltage E T 1 and to this we add the voltage drop I into X G we get the internal voltage of the synchronous generator. Delta which is the phase difference between E m and E G is called power angle and this delta is sum of all these three angles delta G, delta L and delta M. If we plot a graph relating power angle delta and power P or electrical power P E, you can call this as P E. Then this graph comes out to be a sine <laughs> curve. The expression for P E is the internal voltage of the generator, the magnitude of this voltage, internal voltage of the motor E m divided by the total reactance x into sin. Now, if you see here as the delta increases the power output increases and it becomes maximum at delta equal to 90 degrees. On the same diagram if I draw the mechanical input line, the mechanical input is not function of delta and therefore, it comes out to be a line parallel to delta axis. Okay. In this diagram, we will write this as P m mechanical power. Now, this mechanical power line and this power angle characteristic intersect at two points. This is one point I call it A, the another point we call it B. A is a stable equilibrium point while B is unstable equilibrium point. That is, we will denote this A as a stable equilibrium point normally called S E P and B is unstable equilibrium point. The system if it is operating at this point A and if it is perturbed then it develops the forces so as so that it returns back to this operating point A. However, if this system is made to operate which is at the point B which is also an equilibrium point, but if suppose uh, some perturbation is given then the system will lose stability. It cannot come back it cannot rest develop restoring forces to come back to the position point B and therefore, our stable operating point is A and 
we shall represent this operating angle as that is when the system is under steady conditions the mechanical power is equal to electrical power and operating angle is delta naught. Now, I conclude here what we have learned in this lecture. I have tried to give you the basic classification of the power system stability. We have defined the stability in broad terms. We have developed swing equation of the machine and we have also defined a very important term inertia constant h. We will continue further in the next lecture.